in the floor, of course, separate them. It's so stupid, and that happens at least one more, the with the Arnie speech, with the overdone voice guy who doesn't even really look like Arnie. He also says, I think the worst is over. And then, you know, more shit happens. So anyway, the um, Amanda Pete gets kind of upset and she calls and has them come back, which is of course not that smart because it's, it, it, explain the logic of her character to me anyway. Shit has just happened to her, so she asks for the kids to come back. Is it like a, some kind of weird, I'm gonna take you with me thing? I, why does she have them come back to her when the bad stuff happened to her instead of going to meet to meet the kids and then together they go. Anyway, John Cusack comes back and um, you know rescues them and knocks Gordon's uh, car into the abyss and they have a little look and he's like, oh, sorry, dude. What? Would he really care about the car? Everything is falling apart around him. Is I don't know. Maybe it's a, a comment on the materialism, which there are you know a couple of in the film, and they're t reasonable. If um, at least one of them's really hammered home, they really didn't want anyone to miss it. So they drive, and thus the film begins. What it is going to try to derive the most scares from, and it is, it is exciting, it is, um, a lot of the time you do get into it. The basic, you know, it, it basically runs as someone is in a vehicle, most of the time it's going to be a plane, and they're trying to outrun the, um, the ground collapsing behind them. And um, the ground collapsing behind them, and in general, what is dangerous, what is threatening, moves as fast or as slow as it needs to for plot convenience and to make it threatening near near the end. Not the chronological leap. There's first a door that just whoosh, slams immediately, you know, instantly, and then another door slowly, so that you know the kid can be shoved over, and the dog, and all that. So anyway, they drive around for a while, and, you know, fortunately the cracks don't just suddenly happen in front of them, or, you know, it, it never, they're never on an island, it, it never, um, there's always some direction they can go, um, and, um, they drive past some stupid comic relief, which is actually kept to a pretty nice minimum level. There's not an awful lot of it, and a little of it is actually funny, so that's nice. They um, they get to they they get to the first of their planes, and Gordon's not a pilot, but he can fly, so they do. And um, then they go back to Yellowstone Park, where uh, he meets uh, Cusack meets back up with Psycho Harrelson. And after pursuing him for no real reason, he finds out where exactly the map is because it wouldn't have made sense to look for it himself in spite of the fact that he had the car, where it was pretty clear all of Harrelson's worldly possessions were all located. Anyway, they, um, so they uh, drive off, Harrelson bites the dust pretty literally, uh, in a pretty cool way. The, um, <clears throat> so they, um, Cusack outruns the, he actually does fall down, um, he's, he's like inside the, the little trailer, camping trailer thingy, and he somehow gets out, and he like starts to climb on you know, and one hand comes up, and the other hand cut to another angle, and he's suddenly all the way up. Don't know 
don't ask me. It just happens that way. And then he outruns the uh, the abyss growing behind him, and somehow, when he gets onto the plane, the abyss is moving that much faster so that it can actually keep up with the plane and be right behind it, in spite of the fact that the plane is obviously moving a hell of a lot faster than Cusack was. But anyway, we get another scene of vehicle moving away from growing hole behind, and it takes off, and it flies past buildings that start to fall down. Gordon seems incapable of steering completely around them, so he steers in between them, and we get some tension. It somewhat works. Stuff happens. They meet some more characters. We're introduced to a um, Russian... I think his name is Yuri or something. Played by... Um, He's not actually Danish, he's, he's like Cro Croatian or something. Um, uh, Slatko Burek, I think his name is. Um, he, he lives here in Denmark and he's in a um, bunch of our movies and some television stuff sometimes. Um, if you haven't watched uh, Pusher and you like movies about like the drug environment kind of thing, watch it. <coughs> So he's playing a Russian, which makes pretty good sense since he's Croatian instead of just hiring, you know, Norwegian or Swede or something because we're tall and we don't talk, we don't speak perfect English most of the time. So, um, meet him, his, um, wife, they have some kind of poorly delivered punchline joke stuff about how she's apparently had implants, and then it actually does come to the there's like a, this point about how she didn't really want the implants but Yuri wanted her to and she kind of regrets it that that was pretty good and it wasn't too ham-handed it wasn't it, it was pretty good it was a good point it was well delivered it's it's one of the better parts of the movie in my opinion um, we also meet Sasha who's probably got the thickest accent of the movie and it's just every single H is <sighs> like he he really needs to spit but he can't quite we <laughs> hear it's, it's uh, terrible <clears throat> so some more plane escaping from the gaping hole growing behind it takes off Sasha dies eventually um, I th I guess this is a good, as good a time as I need to point out. Oliver Platt never actually does he ever play anything other than a complete asshole. I think it, it's it's at least nice that this time he's in a an okay sort of movie, a movie that's not downright bad because pretty much everything else. I mean, he's in like a Lake Placid and that movie with that dude from Friends or something. Complete shit. Anyway, so he's he's playing the, like, right wing... I think he's supposed to be the, you know, antagonist. Not nice guy. Um, he has his moments. The ex-wife line was really inappropriate, I thought. Dude, the, it's the end of the world. You can't Forgive, forget, whatever. Um, so, in the end, they all end up um, near these. Um, there's, there's, there are these. Um, they call them arcs, and they can like. They're, they're there to, you know, preserve the human race. We get that dude Stephen, the creepy one, not playing a creep, which is kind of interesting, and. Um, and this is one of the places, it also sort of occurred earlier in Yellowstone Park, where the black dude, Dr. Helmsley or whatever, gets to do whatever he freaking wants. No matter, no one seems to stop him. In, near the end he has like a big, you know, dramatic speech, and it doesn't occur to anyone that, you know, the, the he, he just says, 
Let me talk to them.